All right, I'm going to start an abdominal assessment. And we'll, how we start that is we're going to talk to the patient. Hey, my name's Dawn. How's it going? Pretty well. Are you patient? Kendra. Yes. All right, for the abdominal assessment, we're going to start asking questions. Um, what's your daily diet like? No. What's your daily diet like? For breakfast, I generally have an egg white omelet. You always take the fifth, too. For lunch today, I had a grilled chicken salad. And for dinner, we will be grilling chicken. All right, so a high-protein diet. Yes. Um, <laughs> do you pass excessive gas, flatulence? I do not. Sudden weight loss increase? No, stable. Do you take any medicine? Nothing Supplements. Protein every night. Um, I'm saying I'm too much. Uh, what else do we do? Um, history of surgeries. No, sir. No surgeries. Pain, tenderness anywhere? Nowhere. Awesome. Um, next, we're going to start by inspecting the abdomen. Uh, so, as we're looking at it, um, I don't know. No, no, there's nine regions here, four different quadrants. Um, know where the organs are going to be. The liver's going to be up here. You're going to have the pancreas and the spleen over here. Underneath the liver is going to be the bile duct. The kidneys are actually going to be the, in the upper quadrant, um, upper left and white, uh, right quadrants. Uh, this is the medial line here. Um, appendix is going to be Lower right, I hope I didn't say the liver was upper left. Upper right. Appendix is going to be lo lower right. Um, uterus is going to be midline. Bladder is going to be midline. You peed before this too, right? Yes. Alright. So know where stuff is going to be. Um, know where the organs are going to be hollow or solid too. It's going to reflect on different kind of sounds like... The kidneys are going to be a solid or, oh, I know they're a bad example because there's so much blood flow there. Um, I'm going to use the liver, for example. That's going to be a solid organ, so that's going to have a dull sound to it, whereas the stomach is going to have like a tympanic sound because it's a hollow organ, uh, tympanic being higher pitched. Um, that's going to be later on when we ask it, like, which you're going to do first with the abs. Listen before you get all touchy. And let's pretend I have gloves on, too. Um... So, yeah. So, the skin looks fine. Uh, it's all the same color. I'm not seeing any signs of jaundice. Um, jaundice would be from the liver. Too much bilirubin. Destruction of blood cells. So, it's going to increase the yellow pigment or whatever come out in the skin. Another test for the liver would be ALT, AST. And, uh, I, I don't know. I guess I'll start by uh, palpating. And we're going to go counter... No, I... I, I just did the opposite to what we said. We're going to listen first with the bell of the stethoscope. Um, and what I'm going to be listening for is the different sounds. Um, dullness, tympanic. I'm also going to be listening for the aorta, if there's any brutes. Or just anything that I shouldn't be hearing. And I'm going to assess bowel movement too. Let me get these on. There's three spots I want to listen to in the upper right quadrant. All the other quadrants, it's two spots. Besides the aura, which is midline. Bell sounds are present. Um, I didn't hear any brutes. Uh, there's another word I want to use too. I didn't hear any brutes. Bell sounds present. Um, I didn't hear any excessive tympanic or dullness sounds. Everything sounded pretty good. 
skin color is good. So the next thing I'm going to start with towel painting. And if there's any pain, let me know. And that's another thing too. I'm going to be looking at facial expressions for grimacing. If there's any pain, because patients are always aren't honest. That wasn't counterclockwise like it should have been. There's no tenderness, um, no lumps or nodules. Next, with my non-dominant hand, I'm going to feel with the tips of my fingers about a half inch in, going counterclockwise. Pain or tenderness? Now we're going to go about an inch and a half to two inches deep. And what I'm going to be feeling for is any obstructions, lumps, pain, um, pain, tenderness, stuff that shouldn't be there. Right here is going to be the spleen and the um, pancreas. What happens with the spleen too um, is that actually grows down to where the stomach is. It's not going to, well, I, I guess horizontal, it's, it's going to grow like where the stomach should be, and I can be able to feel that. I can also hear it because then it takes the tympanic sound out of the stomach. If the bladder's full, I can feel that, but it's not. And it delivers in large, they'll be a little more present and easier to feel. I'm going to feel the tip of it coming out from the ribs here, but I don't, <laughs> which is a good sign. All right, no pain, tenderness, no abnormal lumps. All right, can you sit up for me? And I just have to palpate your back. So what I'm going to do is palpate the kidneys for any pain or tenderness. Um, they're going to be about where the 12th thoracic rib is. And how I'm going to palpate that is going to be with my ulnar bone. No pain, tenderness, facial grimace, and kidneys are good. Lay back down. Last, I'm going to assess for any ascites or para, aka peritoneal fluid. Um, and since I don't have any assistance with me, please take this arm, put it on the owner's side. We're going to do that. And I'm going to feel for any waves of fluid by palpating this side. And I'm not feeling any waves go over at all, so there's no fluid. So that's also a good sign. And that concludes this assessment.